up guys, what's going on and welcome back to York City where three games have been played since we last met with that penalty loss to Norwich under 23s. I, I, may, have, I may have laughed a little bit too much at that non-save during the editing process. It's still amusing to me. Um, Ted Smith, I love you, but that was a bit daft. I can forgive him. I can forgive him for that one though. He has been flawless for about a year and a half otherwise. So yeah, I can let him off, I can let him off that one. Uh, by the way, I did just check on Kento and Army whilst I was flicking through those three games. He's been loaned out to a Japanese side. I will come back round to Kento and Army because there has been something else happening in the interim. Not related to him directly, but a similar thing has happened. However, just running through these three games first. Mansfield 1-1. One, one. Using the diamond still? Hmm. They scored. We equalised basically straight away. So, fine. It was basically dull for the remaining 75 minutes. No one played scintillatingly well. And, uh, yeah, that was it. After that, I decided maybe we've done enough games with this diamond that the original formation might work again. And work again it did. With a 4-0 win over, admittedly, slightly struggling Carlisle. But we slipped up against those bottom of the table clubs before, and we didn't this time, thank God. Because two goals from Daniel Williams, two goals from Juanito Lopez. It's all gone well in that particular version. 4-0 though, Ted Smith on a 6.8. Ferguson didn't do particularly well either. 6.7 from him. And Nacelle, actually, as well. For some reason, neither of those two are particularly enjoying this switch back. And in fact, I don't really feel like I've seen a lot from Nacelle for quite a while. And then sticking with the system, I changed literally nothing with it going into this older match. Not even the not even the attacking mentality. I might regret that attacking mentality quite quickly. But 2-0, still didn't come off attacking, mostly because then we actually needed to score, and we managed to keep it 2-0 for the rest of the game. So I think the bigger problem there was not necessarily the system, but that. I brought Boom in for two games, he's back out again. His inability to actually pay attention to a match is kind of getting a little bit annoying now. The worst part is he actually has just under average concentration. His marking is actually pretty good. His positioning is pretty good. His decisions are all pretty good. Strength. But concentration, actually kind of good. Yes, yeah, so Romano's back in. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about in regards to the Kento and Army tease at the beginning of that is this young gentleman here, Chao Nan, who, like Kento and Army, was formed into nothing basically he was a complete free agent as a generated player lurking in china's under 20 it's always a good idea to check those typically sort of japanese chinese sort of lower level uh, lower level under whatever's basically the under 20s under 23s all that jazz it's always a good idea to keep an eye on those because some particularly china as well they tend to get a few good players generated in this year's game last year's too i seem to remember there were two particularly good defenders that came through last year's game while I was doing my Burnley save. I ended up with one of them. Chelsea had the other. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye out on those ones. And sure enough, under-20s, he's literally the only player in China's under-20s, so I'm not entirely certain how this works. But, um, yeah, he joins us permanently in October next year because I think I have to wait till he gets to 18. So, fine. But he's on two stars. And considering Ferguson's contract runs out at the end of the year and boys is a little bit hit and miss, and Kinsella hasn't been, frankly, as good as I'm hoping he'd be either. Yeah, a left-back is possibly quite needed next year, and then we basically just have to wait a month, two months, before we can actually use him. He's on trial, and I've stuck him in the under-18s, because I think he can actually play there for the time being. But, as things go, for a 17-year-old with potential ability off the chart, seemingly, I quite like him. 16 determination is the main thing. You need to work on the strength and the jumping reach, and the going forward a little bit. But, yeah... For a free agent, and he's only going to be on like 170 quid a week when he actually does join. So basically, can't go wrong. Meanwhile, an update on Sharox still doesn't have any finishing. I love my I love my under 18s, by the way. My best prospects: a striker here with four finishing, a defender here with five tackling. And Lloyd South was the other one, wasn't it? Ah, 13 finishing on him. In fairness, he's not doing it too badly. But today is all about that Swindon because we play them twice. It's in the league, away from home. And once in the cup at home. And this is the formation right now because boy's still injured and boy's been in the team. I can't remember what happened. Oh, yes, because we're playing two days after the last match. So a few people are a little bit tired. It's that December period where we have to do all this nonsense. Admittedly, Lightow on 90% isn't that bad. And as an inverted winger, you can see that on the comparison immediately, better. Actually, no, they need to be all around because he's right footed and he's left footed. So with that in mind, also. In previous games, I've sort of had all three, these front three on attacks, but because of Barty's in at right back and he's obviously not the quickest anymore, I figured I'll let him be a little bit more supportive on that right hand side just so he doesn't get maybe that too much more exposed. He sells in on the left though, just because 
players are a little bit tired, as I say, Thor's in the team as well because of that reason. Smith, though, Kinsella, Tavares, Romano back for the reasons I've already stated. Abate, Smallwood in the defensive midfielder role. Simplify that up a little bit. Vassell and Thor in the middle, Stanley Lee Tao up here, and Lopez up front, of course, as always. That I'm planning to help in the future, because that is very hard to replace at this stage of the season. God forbid anything happens to him. May not surprise you, I've gone and checked out Portugal again. There's a few of them there. Well, not they'll let us have them for any money that we can actually afford. There's also one in Australia. But that's all a bit of a tease at this stage, as I try and get this team to be motivated. Not bad. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. I need to find a new assistant manager. <laughs> I'll sort that out in January. I'll let him have Christmas. We said Christmas. I'll let him have New Year. And so far, Swindon are 23rd, by the way. Um, just to put that into perspective, you can see Carlisle here, the team that I highlighted before that we beat 4-0. So far, so dull. Which I'm kind of glad for because I think I rambled a little bit too much in that first part. Highlight, Ted Smith. That's what he's supposed to do. Give it to Vares. Kinsella now has been booked. We aren't get stuck in now, which, particularly in the lower end of the set, excuse me, uh, particularly in the lower leagues, I think Get Stuck In does tend to work a little bit more. Um, so I've, I've bobbed that back on. I've also gone a little bit more direct on the passing than I usually am. Uh, it's, it's sort of in the centre. Because that's the one thing that I never typically change. I always keep that on short, normally. And if I'm trying to get force a little bit of a change, maybe that's the thing I need to alter. Lopez has scored a penalty for the second time in recent games. Uh, it would, would have been against Carlisle, the other one, yeah, in the 4-0. I mean, it's... Admittedly, two in three games for this formation. Nissal is really tired. Has he taken a knock? But yeah, we've had two penalties in three games in this formation, so I'm not sure if that's just something that this formation is doing or it's just law of averages at this point. Because really, actually, in the league, we haven't had that many penalties. Considering how many penalties there were in the beta with the Athletic of Madrid, obviously, we were having like penalties every other game, one way or the other. And Lopez, one on one, never mind. Penalties in general do seem to be slightly lesser. No, Nissal is just normally tired. Okay. We may have to take him off at some point. I don't, don't have Cavalier on the bench, but I can always bring Williams on if necessary. And uh, first half ended. Not really sure what the highlight was, but I think it's just because there weren't any other highlights, so he decided to give me the end of first half one. As I sort of mentioned before, I think if there aren't enough of them, they just give you those which don't normally feature on the key anymore. Start and end of half highlights used to be a, you know, a normal fixture in last year's game and ones that preceded. This year's not so much. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get Nacelle off. He's already on 69. He's on a 6.4 as well. For some reason, he's not enjoying this change of formation back to this. Neither is Stanley, but his match sharpness isn't brilliant at this stage either. Bennett, fine. Maybe it's time for him to have a bit of redemption. Uh, that goes all the way back to the back post for Nacelle, who doesn't, doesn't control it. I'm so glad I'm taking him off. They have quite a few four players forward here, and Isgrove is just making a mockery of number 32. I think that's a party, obviously, isn't it? Uh, Romano, though. If that was boom. We might have conceded there. <laughs> oh, Boom's consistency is frankly laughable at times. What was that, Thor? Thor actually had an offer from a... Um, I'm not sure where it was, actually, but Thor actually had an offer come in. About 60 grand, I think it was. I offered him a new contract. He's actually accepted it. It's £100 less a week. I'm not sure how that's worked out, but we managed to do it. Uh, ooh. It says it's one-on-one, -on -one, and it goes out for a throw-in. Just over 15 minutes left to go. I am tempted to change one of those... Fullbacks. Then I replace them. Oh, I do have Clarks on the bench. Um, we we'll replace the veteran, I think. Although Lee Tower is actually really tired as well, but I don't think I have two wingers on the bench anymore. Henry's clean through here, and I don't like it. I like it a little bit more now. This win actually puts us in the playoffs. Although Coventry have three games in hand, I'm not sure how that's occurred. It must be in. No, um, I'm not sure. Mm. What? How? How would they have three games in hand? The, the, the card would still be in the Carabao Cup, surely. Excuse me. Oh, I'm kind of glad I had Clark on there because I think his reaction there saved us. There's a highlight at the very, very, very end of this game. Yellow card for Curran. It's not a red card that starts this. And I do wonder, again, if it's just the complete lack of highlights in general in this game is meaning that we're seeing the end of game highlight as well. Because that was rubbish. And so was that. So whilst, whilst we are in the playoffs here, we do have to consider the fact that Coventry do have three games in hand. Crystal Rovers sat their manager, by the way. They're in 10th now. Bradford also sat Jerry Barton. They're in 9th. It's not like they're doing terribly. Oh, Bennett. It wasn't just an end of game highlight. Bennett scored. Bennett, fine. Maybe it's time for him to have a bit of redemption. Well, we left that late to make that save, didn't we? But I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it all day long. Lopez turns... No, Lopez doesn't turn provider. It goes to Lee Tower first. Bring him to winger. That's something I've not seen in a very long time. Nobody in this section. Swindon. Sort your fans out. So a penalty and a 94th minute goal. 
Could have been a little bit more comfortable on that, I think. I think I'm just going to surgically say a good win, boys. Especially as I kind of did a number on their, mo their morale la in the team talk after last game. Hmm. Yeah, so we move into promotion contention. Just a quick look at that league table in full. Uh, Bristol Rovers have a game in hand as well, and they can get on to 40 points. Salford also have three games in hand. And the fact they have three games in hand and Coventry, I suspect one of them will be against each other, though. So, But mathematically, they can get ahead of us as well. So we may be in the playoffs, but not going to get too ahead of ourselves at this stage. Lopez, though, still leading the way. And you see there, Tavares is suspended for the cup game, which is mildly annoying. Here we are, then. And also worth mentioning, Swindon just sacked their manager after the last match. So sorry, but I've got two, two managers have been sacked after we've beaten them this season. I feel like I'm just, like, the Grim Reaper this season. Stanley hasn't really impressed since he's been back, but he has just signed a new contract, and he's actually taken a lower level of play as well. He's on, gone on to squad player, opposed to important or whatever he was on before. Smith signed a new one. He's getting a little bit more money per week. Lopez has signed a new one. He's getting a little bit less money per week. So is Stanley, actually. So I think I've done well on those renewals somehow. I've got three, well, four players on less money than they had before, and Smith's paying a little bit more. So it's a net gain on the wage front. I think Lopez does technically get more of a raise, though, if we get promoted than he had before. So, swings and roundabouts. Well, this match does require the old school combination at the back. Awkwardly, both of them are on yellow card warnings, though. I'm just going to play them both in their preferred. And because I don't need a homegrown player, I can put Cavalier on the bench as well. That's good news for me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Start Williams. And everything else is fine. Ferguson, Romano, Boom, Clark. Smith and Goals, Smallwood, Nacelle, Williams, Bennett, Lee Tao, Lopez, my de facto first 11. Pretty much there. Uh, because Ferguson and... Well, no, because Boys is injured. That's why. Bill. Ah, they're trying out my alterated... My altered formation. Really hope it doesn't work for them. Yeah, pile on their misery. They've lost five in a row. That's slightly sadistic in its temperament there, I think. Oh, if I could have the FA Cup scores, not the League 2 scores, that'd be grand. Prize, though. Smith. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Yeah, Lopez. Bennett's in space. Well, one minute. Manager of Swindon now. Um, hasn't gone well. I can see quite a few high numbers on their formation. They changed it. Yeah, a lot of a few players on lack of mass sharpness, and it kind of showed there. And the goalie just puts it into the path of the Italy. Not also not mass sharp. Bennett. Not Romano. That felt like a longer gap than it was. It's only four minutes later, folks. Lopez though is through and gone past that defender, and it's two 0 Oh dear. Well, when we got Swindon, I I was. Sort of lamenting a little bit as a sort of a lack of opportunity of maybe playing a sort of a Premier League side for money purposes. But, um, so far so good. Uh, we could also obviously get one in the next round. Now we get the prize money of progressing. Is it the benefit? So far, Romano misses the next round regardless. It's having a quick scout as nothing else goes on. Leicester are beating Chelsea. Alright, after half an hour. Uh, it starts with them. Throw in. Like they try I got distracted by the update on the top left there. I completely didn't even notice the fact that Lopez had gone clean through. They are so tired. They have started the right back who was absolutely shattered at the end of the match three days ago. And unsurprisingly, he's shattered again. Right, half time. Only upset might be Aston Villa, who I think are still Premier League. Oh, sorry. I didn't see this one. Man City are 1 0 down. Uh, assertively say, uh, keep it going. Oh, I feel like passionately and assertively saying keep it going have completely different sort of intonations to them. Implications. That's the word I was looking for. Well, second half is going a little bit. Nope, there we are. There's a highlight. 70 minutes gone. Why? Why is it whenever I start the sentence saying, "Oh, it's, it's you know things are going fine, nothing's happening, uh, something immediately happens." Clark, <laughs> well, we're not going to get on the end of that, obviously, but Lopez might. Is that the same person who made the mistake for the first goal? Because his rating is going to be absolutely shocking if it is. Clark, though, yeah, Clark's pass through to Leto here was. Well, I think Leto just wasn't paying attention. But then again, neither was Sam Smith. Admittedly, he was probably working on his new record. Yeah, I think it was the same player. He's on a 6.0. So with that in mind, Smallwood, in a way, we could actually try and protect Boom here. Make sure he doesn't get another yellow card. And make sure I've still got two, because Block can come in here. It's three and all up, I think we'll be okay. Whilst he has scored and is on a better rating, I think this is an opportunity maybe to get Stanley into a game. Because he is dominant right foot, so therefore inside winger makes more sense to him on this side. I'm going with the insides, by the way, just because... I hear, like, I see so many people talking about it, and I hear, see some people here, like, I hear so many people talking about them. Like, the inside wingers and forwards tend to work a lot better than normal wingers, especially with, when you've got wing backs at the back. So I'm trying it out, and so far it seems to be sort of working, but then again, it's only really worked against teams at the very bottom of the table. Yeah, just do the two. Make sure 
Boom doesn't get that second yellow card and puts him out of the next round. Lopez could be on for a hat-trick here if he puts this one in. And does. I think we can just save our legs a little bit now. Just go balanced. 4-0. <laughs> and yeah, maybe maybe just save the legs and say Lopez. Give him the rest of the game off. Although middle East strikers tend to be okay fitness-wise. Long term, we don't need to see the offside version because it won't even show him at that angle. Yeah, just bring on Thor for Williams because he tends to get the most tired of it. So we might as well preserve his legs for the last 10, 15 or whatever it is. Man City's still 1-0 down and, had, and they've had a player sent off, I notice. 2-0 down now. Man City are out. Not like that's going to help me win it or anything. Very pleased with everything and the performance because, frankly, that was amazing. I'll bring you the draw. I'll let you know who we get. Let's see, meanwhile, some catch-up games are being played. But no, actually, some teams are actually going on to 26 games. But Coventry have won one of the ones they had in hand, which means we're no longer in the playoffs. Although we now have one ahead of Newport and our goal difference is far superior. So if we win that one, my birthday's wrong. It's the 1st of January on here. But £150,000 for winning in the third round is the main reason why I'm actually okay with not getting a Premier League team in round three. No surprises on the Sunday, which does mean all of them apart from Man City are still in this when it comes to the big six. Although we just lost one straight away. Man United away at Millwall or Crystal Palace. Tottenham do go away to Preston or Brentford. Premier League teams are kind of dropping a little bit. Chelsea or Leicester. Okay, we've avoided Notts County, which would have been kind of annoying. Burnley away. Who are championship, but it's still Burnley. Well, they were relegated in the first simulated season. Well, I say simulated season, the first season. That said, seem to have most of the same players and manager. Yeah, they've still got Dwight McNeil, surprisingly. And they've acquired Matthew Ryan as well. There's not that much of a different team for Burnley, so we can basically regard them as a Premier League team at this point. Turf more, kind of, not the biggest of stadiums, but it still will be a nice windfall from gate receipts at the very least. And, uh, well, it's my old stream save as well. So that does slot in later in the month, and that is very much likely what we're going to bring you. Along with one of the games either side, I'll decide later on which one I want to do of those two. Although I'm pretty certain our first game of the season was Port Vale, was it not? And then I didn't show you Grimsby. So, with that in mind, probably Grimsby and Burnley then. Until then, ta -ra. Probably have some transfer news for you then by then as well.